going to get hello world. It doesn't matter whether this gets pushed. It doesn't matter whether the tag gets replaced on Docker Hub. If I push the hello world evil as other DevOps gene uh, hello world latest up to Docker Hub, it'll still always be this because it's always this SHA-256. Okay? So what that does is gives you excellent configuration management, like you can always repeat it. The downside is you're going to have to handle those SHA-256s and put them into your, uh, into your um, builds or into your, your digest, into your Docker Compose, into your, your manifest, whatever it is. Uh, the good news is you've really eliminated a huge type of attack that could happen, um, and that has happened, right? Uh, it happened fairly recently to Python in a couple places where a company actually was using a Python package, a, just a uh, dedicated hacker knew that they used that package. They went ahead, became contributors on the open source project, created a new version of it, just, just fixed some easy uh, low hanging fruit for the project and put in some special code that had a very specific line that said if you're coming from this domain, go ahead and you know, steal secrets or whatever it was waited until they saw that that company had taken the, the new, latest version, then they went back again and actually put in a new version that didn't have the vulnerable code in it um, so that nobody else would see it. Um, and nobody noticed, and that company started running it. They were using a version when they went up to GitHub, sure enough it was tagged right. When they went up to Docker Hub, it was tagged right. Everything worked, but they were using a vulnerable version. So, all right. So let's wrap up uh, some key takeaways. Um, there are real reasons behind these security recommendations. They aren't just theoretical attacks. They're not that hard to exploit, even if I blew one of them. Um, there, there's good reasons to do these things, and most of these are very, very easy to implement. Um, it is worth doing some threat modeling. If you start saying, hey, this is not easy to implement for me, like running as a non-root user, do some threat modeling, and, and what I mean by that, when I say just even informal back of the napkin, just start thinking about what's the worst that can happen? What happens if this is malicious code, right? Is that a real problem for me? Or is there just no way this could be malicious code? I don't have to worry about it. Figure out what the, the risk is and how much effort you have to put into it to see if it's worthwhile. Remember, you ain't gonna need it. The principle of least privilege, so if you don't need to be root, don't be root. And restrict the blast radius when practical. Um, I keep talking about all these recommended practices and stuff. Uh, the best ones generally come from, oops, come from um, CIS, um, the Center for Internet Security. There's a Docker benchmark, talks about the host, the Docker daemon, the container images, container runtime. For most of us, if we're developers, the container images section is going to be the important piece. Um, for running Kubernetes, there's all sorts of uh, benchmarks there from CIS as well and they have generic versions plus the versions for all the Kubernetes providers. Um, some of the tools I mentioned, uh, Trivi, Gripe, Checkoff, Dive we used, Git Guardian, Truffle Hog, and that's it. Any questions? Great talk. I have a question about uh, you recommended using uh, the SHA of the Docker images uh, when if I were to use the latest. Uh, what if I was using like version one as my tag? Would you still recommend using SHA because accidentally people might replace your version one or right, version two? Yeah, and I should I should have said that when when. Um, the tags that you apply are just tags. They're, they're completely replaceable. They're not, um, by default, there's nothing that prohibits you from overriding them. So whether it's latest, which happens by default, uh, if we don't specify, it's implicit, or even if it's version 1.0 or, or 1.2 or whatever, those still can be overridden. You can set up your repo, your, your, your registry, to prohibit overriding of tags. Uh, but that's something you have to set up. It's not set up by default in, say, Docker Hub or, or, or a public repo. Um, and 
the risk of this one obviously is a lot higher when you're using public images than when you're using non-public images. So yes, the, the answer to your question is I would absolutely, especially on, uh, on public repos, make sure you're using the SHA-256 as often as possible, as often as practical anyway. Uh, is there an easy way for me to set up some sort of, I don't know, caching repo or a wrapper repo where I can say my tag that I'm going to use is, you know, stable, whatever, and I control that tag, but it actually points to some SHA in another repo so that I can then safely use those repos without needing to keep track of all the different SHAs. Um, I don't know of any easy way to do it other than writing code in your CI-CD pipeline, but certainly you could do something in your CI-CD pipeline to parameterize your Docker file, say, generate the Docker file from, you know, I read from my database where it says this image, version 1.0, this is the two, SHA-256 for it, generate the Docker file and do the build out of that. It would be kind of homegrown. I don't think there's anything that does it by default, but that actually would make a lot of sense. It would save you a lot of the overhead uh, while still using the right SHA-256. Then you just have to protect your database. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.